Hello and welcome to All Together Now, which is Tramshed's free arts programme running every Tuesday and every Sunday at four o'clock throughout spring right here on YouTube Live. My name is Dan Delamotte and this afternoon I'm going to be teaching you all about the rules, yes there are rules, of joke making and joke telling. We'll be learning all about homophones, we'll be learning all about homonyms, we'll be learning all about puns and being punny, and the art of silliness and surrealism. Now to get the most out of this session today, please choose live chat rather than top chat on the chat function. That way you can chat to us and other people joining in the session. This session will last approximately about eight hours and after the first two, only joking, the session will last around 35 to 40 minutes and you can join in as much or as little as you want, but please do join in as much as you can. As I said, my name is Dan and I make up jokes. I make them up, but I never eat them. Can anyone guess why? Not because they taste funny. Now, what kind of things make you laugh? Or what kind of jokes do you enjoy telling or hearing? Let us know in the chat and we'll see if we can shape those and use those in any of the jokes that we make up this afternoon. Now, in this country, in the UK, we have a very particular sense of humour when it comes to telling jokes. This country is known around the world for its use of what's known as wordplay in our jokes and in the humour. And we'll be incorporating that in this session today. So in the first session, in the first section of, uh, of this um, workshop, we'll be looking at homophones. Now homophones are words that sound the same, but have different meanings and different spellings. So an example of a homophone would be the word bear both B-A-R-E, to be naked or nude, and B-E-A-R, the animal. So a very bad example of turning this particular homophone into a joke might be, why was Winnie the Pooh cheeky? Well, he always had a bear behind. Now that joke isn't gonna set the world on fire, but it's an example of how to use homophones in jokes and these kind of very Christmas crackery kind of jokes. So another example of a homophone joke might be, uh, I was given a lump of cheese and the first thing I thought was great. Or another example might be, what do you call a pony with a sore throat? The answer is a little horse. Uh, we've got Emily saying that uh, she uh, loves a cheese joke. Well, good. Um, let's see if we can uh, come up with some more of those uh, later on uh, this afternoon. And Lily says, hello. Nice to see you uh, here, Lily, as well. So I'm sure you can do better than that Winnie the Pooh joke. Why, why was Winnie the Pooh cheeky? Because he always had a bear behind. So I'm going to put some more examples of homophones on uh, on your screens now and we'll all have a little bit of time to see if we can make up our own jokes using these homophones now how about this here is the here is the reveal for, for today's workshop the very best or in fact the very worst of these jokes will be put up pride of place uh, in the tram sheds window so that everybody walking through Woolwich we'll have a chance to have a look uh, at your joke and who made it up. Um, so do uh, have a think about that as you come up with your jokes. And here we have on your screen now a whole array of homophones. So let's all look at those homophones and see if we can come up with uh, any, uh, any jokes using those. I'll give you a bit of time now to come up with your homophone jokes. Throw them in the chat as soon as you've got them and I'll read them out. I'll have a look at some, uh, see if I can make up some as well. And also, if you've thought up a homophone that's not on that list, please do use it because that list is by no means uh, exhaustive. But I'm going to look uh, at those homophones as well. Let's see what, uh, let's see what I can come up with. Um, okay, how about why, what happened? What happened when the frog parked on a double yellow line? He got towed away. You can come up with anything more groan worthy or groan inducing than that. How about I went to a restaurant before lockdown? Remember restaurants? 
and I said to the waiter, um, what's this? He said, it's bean soup. I said, I don't care what it's been. What is it now? Again, <laughs> see if you can come up with anything remotely better than that. Oh, we've got one that's come through. Why were the fish and chips squirming? Because they needed a pee. Very good. <laughs> exactly. That that kind of that kind of grown worthy joke is what we're after this afternoon. Let's see if I can come up with some more as well. I went to the pet shop. I did. I went to the pet shop the other day. I said to the pet shop owner, I said, "Have you got any birds going cheap?" He said, "They all go cheap." Exactly. Exactly. Let's see if we can come up with anything better than that. Uh, what about? Well, I mean, this is an old one, an old classic, I suppose. I'm sure you've all heard this. I'm sure you've had all had this in a Christmas cracker. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. That's an old one. I am proud to say I didn't make that one up myself. Mm, looking at those homophones, how about what do you call a row of rabbits walking backwards slowly? The answer might be a receding hairline. Here's another one. Oh, along the same theme, here we go. Why was the Easter Bunny at the Salon? It, to get an updated hairdo. Very good. That's from Lauren, that one. Hmm, what else have we got? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Well, I suppose I've already used that one, haven't I, about um, my pony with a sore throat. It was a little horse. What else is there? Oh, here's a topical one for you. What's the difference between uh, Prince Charles and a tennis ball? Well, one's heir to the throne and the other's thrown in the air. See if you can do better than that. I'm just scanning through these homophones, see if I can do uh, any better than that. Lily says, uh, what do you call an animal in the forest with no eyes? Lily's not put the answer, but it, oh, here we go. No idea. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lily, for that one. Keep them coming in. Um, I wanted to go to the snooker the other day, but uh, I arrived and the queue was far too long. Some of these are easier to think up jokes than others, I suppose, just looking at them now. I mean, I'm trying to make one up with boos and boos. What about uh, why was the ghost thrown out of the pub because he couldn't handle his booze? Does that make sense? Is that a, is that a decent joke? Um, what did the butcher say to the leg of lamb? Nice to meet you. I mean, it's, it's a stretch, isn't it, to call that a joke, but it is using the rules of homophones in, in making up these jokes. Hmm, rain and rain, I'm trying to think up one again, I'm trying to think of a topical joke about rain and rain. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, a joke's just come in from Emily. Again, what happened when the calendar went on a date? It went weak at the knees. <laughs> Very good. I was trying to think of one with weak and weak. I was trying to think of something along the lines of um, gyms reopening. Uh, when will the gym reopen? Too weak. Oh, yeah, that's why I want to go to the gym because I'm too weak or something like that. Uh, it needs fleshing out, but there's, there's, um, there's a possibility there, I think. Karen says, I have a stag and a doe for sale for 50 pounds. No one wants them because they are too dear. They are two deer, a stag and a doe, that's two deer, and they cost 50 quid. Very good, Karen, keep them coming, thank you for that. Uh, here's another one that's just come in, and it is, why was the panto villain kicked out of the pub? Because they couldn't handle their booze. Like, that's better than my one about ghosts. Uh, very good, thank you. Jude, aged four, has just uh, contributed this joke. Why did the cat go to the restaurant because he needed cat food. I mean, yes, Jude, I, I understand. That makes perfect sense. That's entirely logical. Um, it might not necessarily use the rules of homophones, that joke, but, uh, but very well done uh, nonetheless. 
let's spend a little bit more time on these homophones. I'm sure that we can get up with, we can come up with at least one that is worthy of the window at, uh, at the tram shed. Something about whale and whale, whaling. Something, you yeah, know, what's, yeah, da, 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 might be a bit grown up a joke about whaling. Um, what, I mean, I suppose, what, what animal do you want to avoid at a party? A boar. We've got one more that's come in. Sylvie, age seven, says, why is wool always itchy to wear? <laughs> this is a good one. Because it has knits. I like that joke, Sylvie. Thank you very much for that. See if you can come up with another. You should write these down as well, Sylvie, Jude, Lily, Emily, everybody else, Karen, everybody else that's been sending in these jokes. Write them down and make your own Christmas crackers uh, next year. I am proud of my cheap, cheap uh, gag slightly earlier on. A reminder that one when I went to the uh, pet shop, I said, have you got any animals going cheap? He said, got the birds. Um, still trying to think of a good one for for some of these other words. I think there's potential there, especially rain and rain. Uh, why did the weather girls never have a queen? Because they said it was always raining men? No, that's awful. Sorry, I'm hugely embarrassed that I even said that out loud. Um, all right, well, if we get, if you think of any more homophone jokes, keep them coming in as we continue. But I think perhaps we'll move on then. Um, uh, and move on to the next stage of joke making because uh, the thing about um, homophones is that they work better when you say them out loud instead of writing them down because when you see them written down it gives the joke away and it makes them less funny but when we move on to homonyms that's something completely different because if a homophone is a word that sounds the same but is spelled differently a homonym is a word which uh, means a different thing, but is spelt exactly the same. So, for example, uh, on your screens, you'll see uh, why did uh, the word ring and uh, a joke for the word ring, the homonym ring is why did, how did one mobile phone propose to the other mobile phone? Well, he gave her a ring. So ring is an example of a homonym, which is a word which has multiple meanings, more than one meaning, but the same spelling and the same sound. So these jokes work better when you say them out loud or when you write them down rather than just homophones, which work best when you say them out loud. So here on your screen now is a whole list of homonyms rather than homophones. So let's spend some time now seeing if we can come up with homonym-based jokes. So remember the rules, we're just using the homonym uh, to, to make the joke. So I'll kick us off perhaps. An example from that list could be, what is a caveman's favorite type of music? Well, it's rock music, isn't it? Or another example could be, why was the fishmonger grumpy? Any guesses? I'll tell you if you can't guess. Well, he always had a chip on his shoulder. See if you can do better than that using these homonyms. And I'll see if I can come up with some as well. And remember, if you can think of a homonym, a word that is spelt the same, sounds the same, that has different meanings, then use those instead and throw them into the chat. Oh, I've thought of another one. What is the most supportive sea mammal? Does anyone know? I'll tell you. It's a seal of approval. We've got one that's come in. Lauren says, why did the rugby team crash Cinderella's party? 
They heard there was going to be a ball. Yes, I mean that's a that's an old gag, Lauren. I'm afraid. I'm not, there's there's different variations of that joke. The most common one, I think, is why was Cinderella kicked out of the football team because she kept running away from the ball. But uh, but that that's an old gag and a very panto worthy gag. That one. Well done, Lauren. Uh, what do you shout when there's low flying birds? Duck. Oh, we've got another one that's come in. Oh, how about that? Lily has said the, the joke that I literally just said. What do you say before you throw a ball at some water birds? Duck. So another variation of, uh, of, the, same, of the same joke there around the word duck. Talking of ducks, ducks are the most generous birds out there because they always put the bill, the bill, their mouth there, of course. How about, what is the bounciest time of the year? Can anyone tell me what is the bounciest time of the year? The bounciest time of the year. Spring. Did you know, everybody, did you know that my bicycle is always really lazy. He's always too tired to go anywhere. Too tired to go anywhere, my bicycle. Oh, I thought of one that's not on that homonyms list. In the winter, my dog wears his coat. It's cold outside. But in the summer, he wears his coat and pants. Pants. <laughs> Yeah, told you, groan inducing these jokes. Let's see if we can come up with any others. What about, hmm, how did the Pacific Ocean say hello to the Atlantic Ocean? She gave him a wave, a wave. Oh, we've got a joke that's come in. Millie says, why did the bride shout, a chew, a chew? Because someone stood on her, oh, sorry, I've misread that. Why did the bride shout, choo, choo? Because someone stood on her train. Very good, the bridal train. Sorry, Millie, I completely mangled answering that, uh, reading that joke out, but uh, it, it deserved better than my delivery. But did you know, everybody, that uh, before this, before this uh, pandemic, before this lockdown, I worked as a human cannonball at the circus. I did, I was a human cannonball. But then I got fired. But anyway, where do otters keep their money? Does anyone know? Any guesses? Where might an otter keep its money? I'll tell you. The riverbank. Again, just like with the homophone, some of these words are harder to come up with than others. I mean, it is possible if you just think about them. Why did people go to the horse for advice? Because he was emotionally stable. Uh, another joke from Sylvie that's come in. Thank you, Sylvie. It is what's a bat's least favorite sport? Cricket. <laughs> well done, Sylvie. Again, with that joke, you could flip it around and say, what animal do you need to play cricket? A bat. But either either works. The emotionally stable one about horses is, is, is very good as well. Another version of that joke might be, um, did, you, did I tell you that my horse married my pony? It's not a very stable marriage, perhaps. Uh, let's have a look at some of these other words. What is a match oh no what is a lighter's favorite football program match of the day does that make sense mm, it's not very good is it let's see if we can think of anything else what what should you do if you've got a really heavy box of matches empty it until it becomes a lighter mm, maybe what, how about, what is the noisiest part of a tree? Any guesses for that one? The noisiest part of a tree. I'll tell you. 
is bark. Or what is the noisiest um, thing in tennis? A racket, does that make sense? As you can see, some of these jokes are, are better than others. I am going to, my neighbor knocked on the door and uh, my neighbor said, I'm so cross with you playing music. I am going to find a hole in the ground full of water and throw you in. And I thought, oh, he means well. What about, uh, some of these are, why did no one like the number one and three? Because they were odd? Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's a fine joke. The thing about um, doing the, this workshop on YouTube, of course, is uh, I can't hear you bursting out laughing, but I assume that that's what you're doing at home right now, that you are all in hysterics, of course, at all of these incredible homonym jokes. Remember, the best of these homonym jokes and the best of the homophone jokes will find themselves pride of place uh, in the tram shed. Let's see, can we think of one more before we move on? Mm, I've done the chip on the shoulder one. We had one about a bat, a cricket. We had one about ring, bark, lighter, a bank, rock music. We had fire, we had tire, we had wave, we had, we've got, uh, oh, uh, just uh, some love for the that well joke. <laughs> You're very welcome. Use it, use it yourself. You're very welcome to, to have that joke. I didn't make it up myself, that one. That's a, that's a pantomime joke as well. Spring we had, because uh, we're in the, what's the bounciest time of the year? Bill, we had sink, I wonder. Uh, something about, hmm, we'll think about that one. Odd we've done. Glasses is perhaps a difficult one. Um, Something about the short-sighted barkeeper couldn't ever find his glasses, maybe. And we, oh, the, the last one to do before we move on then from this section, perhaps is why are fish so good at singing? Come on, someone must know. Why are fish so good at singing? I'll tell you. Because they're always practicing their scales they are they're always practicing their scales fishes fish even they are now before we move on just to let you know that uh we'd love to know what you think so you can get in touch via email info at tramshed.org or on the tramshed's social media the links will be, will be put into the chat so for example if you're on facebook you can get in touch at tramshed arts on twitter it's at tramshed underscore and on instagram it's the same thing at tramshed underscore but now we're going to move on to talk all about puns now does anyone know what a pun is well i'll tell you because i can't hear you uh, it's a joke that involves a word that sounds like or rhymes with a word that that is is the part of the joke that you're replacing it with so i like puns because they are punny and what we're going to do now is i'm going to teach you the rules of making a pun based joke because guess what there are there are rules and using this formula uh you'll be able to make uh, your own uh pun jokes work so even if they're not wetting your knickers funny they will still be technically pun so first of all i'll give you the rules so for example the first thing you need to do is think of a word, any word at all. So my example is the word quack, the word quack, which is, of course, the sound a duck makes. Then you, uh, oh, then, then, sorry, I'll come back to this a joke, but I'll come back to that joke in a minute. Uh, then you think of a word that uh, rhymes or sounds like that word. So quack, what does that sound like? Well, to me, it sounds like track, quack and track rhyme. So. Uh, I've got uh, the word track now in my head, track. Now, what do I think of when I think of the word track? Mm, track, what runs on tracks? Trains, so railway track. I think of a railway track. But now I've got to remember the word I thought of right at the beginning. Remember that word? It was the word quack. So I'm now going to change railway track to become railway quack. So railway quack. That could be the answer to my joke. So now I just need to think up the question for the joke. So if railway quack is the answer, the question could be, what do duck trains run on? And the answer is railway quacks. And there, boys and girls, ladies and gents, is the way to make up a pun-based 
joke. I'm going to give you another example now, another two examples to get those juices flowing for you to come up with your own puns. So let's look at those rules again. So the first thing you have to do is come up with a word. So my next example, the word that I come up with is the word mice. Now, what rhymes with mice? Rice. What do I think of when I think of rice? Well, I think of my favorite pudding, which is, of course, rice pudding. Now, remember, I've got to use that word I thought of in the first place, which was mice. So rice pudding becomes mice pudding. Now, mice pudding is the answer to the joke. So I'm just going to think of the question. So if mice pudding is the answer, well, the question could be, what is a cat's favorite dessert? And just like me, the answer is mice pudding. Another example of a pun based joke. If I think of a word, I'm going to think of the word Kermit, as in Kermit the Frog from the Muppets. Uh, and Kermit rhymes with the word permit. Now, permit is like a, a parking ticket. It's something that you need as permission to, to drive or park somewhere. So permit, I'm going to turn that into parking permit. Now, parking permit will have to become parking Kermit, because remember, I've got to use that word I thought of in the first place. So if, if a parking Kermit is the answer, then the joke question could be, what do you need to park your Muppet? The answer is, of course, a parking Kermit. So those are the rules of making pun-based jokes. You think of a word, you think of a word that it rhymes with or sounds like, you think of something that you think of when you think of that word, and then you get your uh, first word back into the joke, and that is the answer, and you've just got to think of a question. So this one's a little bit more challenging, takes a little bit more time, but let's all now see if we can come up with and think up some pun-based jokes. Give you a little bit of time for this. While you're thinking up your pun-based joke, Jude, remember Jude's only four, uh, and uh, he's uh, YouTubing in from uh, Haggerston today, and uh, he says, uh, why did the spaceship go into the black hole? <laughs> because the spaceship was black. Again, that's, that's, that's surrealism, that joke. Uh, you're, you, you're incorporating surrealism in there, Jude, so congratulations on that. It's not necessarily a pun, but it, it did make me titter. So, so well done and keep them coming in. But remember, we are now using um, those pun rules to make up jokes. I bet none of you realize that you need to come up with, uh, you need to know the rules before being funny. So let me try and think up another pun based joke as well. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Uh, so I'm going to think of a word. I'm going to think of the word shark. Okay, shark. What does shark rhyme with or sound like? It sounds like um, park, park, park and shark rhyme. What do I think of when I think of a park? Well, a theme park. It's been a long time since I've been able to go to a theme park, but I thought of a theme park. Uh, but now that has to become a theme shark, remember? Theme shark, not theme park. Uh, where does Jaws like to go to celebrate his birthday? The theme shark? Mm, not great, but it is using the rules of punnery uh, to be a pun-based uh, joke. Uh, we've got a pun that's, uh, that's come in already. And uh, it is, what do dogs use at afternoon tea? Oh, I like this one. I'll repeat the question. What do dogs use at afternoon tea? A pup and saucer. Very good. So let's see if we can work out the stages of that joke. So a pup and saucer. So your word would have been cup. Uh, uh, pup, then cup. Cup and saucer becomes pup and saucer. That's the answer to the question. So you've just got to think up. The, the joke because you've got the punchline. Very good, uh, Emily, that joke there. Let's see if anyone else can come up with a, uh, a pun-based joke. I'm going to see if I can come up with a better one as well. Hmm. Thinking of a word. Uh, I thought of the word uh, nun, you know, a nun. Uh, rhymes with fun. Uh, what do I think of when I think of fun? I think of the fun fair. That's got to become the nun fair. Where do where do priests go to buy their candy floss? The nun fair. 
<laughs> well, it made me laugh. I don't know if it's worthy of the window of the tram shed, that one in particular. Uh, we've got another one from uh, Karen uh, who says, what does the boxer have with his Sunday dinner? What does the boxer have with his Sunday dinner? Bash potato. Very good, bash. So you've come up with your original word, which is uh, which is um, bash, runs with mash, mashed potato becomes bash potato. There's the punchline. And you've just had to think of the, the question. So well done, Karen. Keep them coming in as well. It's not up to me which jokes make the window of the tram shed, by the way. Um, so if you don't see a joke in there, don't come knocking on, on my door, uh, but, uh, but come up with another uh, pun-based or even homophone or homon homonym joke uh, yourself. Let's see if I can come up with one final pun-based joke while we wait to see if any more examples come in. What about... I quite liked my non-fair one, to be honest. Uh, what about... I'm looking out the window to see if that gives me any inspiration. Mm, I can see a lamp post. Lamp. Lamp. Or post. No, that's not that's not doing anything for me. Let me just let me think anymore. I can now I'm looking at my doorway and I can see uh, 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 my friend's washing hanging up. Can that can that trigger any ideas? I can see a coat. Coat rhymes with moat. Moat, I think of a castle. Mm, no, see, it does. It is tricky, isn't it? Because you've got to really, really think. I can. Mm, let me see what else I can. I can see. Uh, I can see my oyster card. Something about oyster. Mm, no, that's not going to work either. That's why it is difficult. That's why it is difficult to come up with your pun-based uh, jokes. Um, what else can I see? Let me see if I can think of one more before we move on. I won. I can literally see my laptop, can't I? Laptop rhymes with... doesn't rhyme with anything, laptop. Uh, da, 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 da. I can see a plant pot. Plant pot, plant rhymes with aunt. Aunt and uncle, plant and uncle. No, that doesn't really make sense either, does it? See, it is tricky, but if you want to make a pun-based joke, this is the kind of thinking that you need to do. Uh, we've got another one in here. Let's see, from Lauren. It says, oh, that's from Lily as well, this one. It says, what do you wear to eat pudding in a puddle? Jelly boots instead of welly boots, I guess. So what Lily's done there is they've thought of the word welly. Welly, uh, jelly, sorry, jelly rhymes with welly. Uh, welly boots becomes jelly boots. That's the punchline. And so you've just got to think of the uh, joke, which is what do you wear to eat pudding in a puddle? Lily, if you uh, wear something in particular to eat pudding in a puddle, then uh, perhaps seek help because that is behavior which I've never experienced before, but it sounds a very fun thing to do uh, nonetheless. We're going to move on, I think, but those are the rules of uh, punning or punnery. Uh, and uh, just have a little think about those um, next time you want to uh, come up with an example. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to maybe my favorite uh, uh, style of joke making, which is about silliness, being silly, or, or the more technical term for it is being surreal, surrealist, uh, nonsensical humor. Now, my favorite comedians all use silliness in the, in the jokes that they make. So my favorite comedians are people like Vic and Bob, which some grown-ups might have heard of, or Harry Hill, uh, who narrates You've Been Framed, my favorite TV show as it happens, uh, but he's very, very silly. In, uh, in the jokes that he makes and the things that he does. Now, you might be surprised again to find out that there are rules to being silly. You can't just be silly just like that. You've got to be quite rigid and formulated in your silliness. And so I'm going to explain to you the rules now of being silly. How about that? So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to think of an object. Now the object, it helps if your object is the most boring, day-to-day -day thing you can see right now in front of you. So no, not your grown-up, an inanimate, non-living object that you can see in your in your day-to-day -day life. So uh, for me, an example would be a wardrobe. Okay, a wardrobe is very matter-of-fact. It's not exciting. It's not special, really, a wardrobe. 
Now I've got to think of uh, ways I would describe the wardrobe if an alien beamed down into my bedroom from Planet Zog and said to me, what is that? And I had to find a way of describing a wardrobe as, um, as matter of fact and as clearly as possible. So what would I say to describe a wardrobe to this alien from Planet Zog? I would say, well, a wardrobe, uh, it has two doors and it has lots of coat hangers in it. That's what I would say about my wardrobe because I don't have many clothes. Um, and now, that's how I describe my wardrobe. It has two doors and lots of coat hangers in it. Now I've got to park that to one side for a moment and think up an activity, a completely different thing to do, an activity, something that you like to do. So for instance, for me, it is going on a trampoline. Now imagine that that alien has been down again and has seen me going on a trampoline and has said to me, what are you doing? I would have to describe what it's like to be on a trampoline. And so I'd say, well, when you're on a trampoline, you bounce up and down. I'm bouncing up and down. I, I'm not really on a trampoline right now, by the way. I'm just pretending. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to link up the description of the wardrobe with the description of what it's like to go on a trampoline. So if I put those two things together, the description of the wardrobe and the description of the trampoline, what it will be is uh, has two doors, lots of coat hangers and bounces up and down. Now, if that is the question, what has two doors, lots of coat hangers and bounces up and down, then we know what the answer is, don't we? Because we've done every single step of the way to get to this point. And so we know that the answer is a wardrobe on a trampoline. A wardrobe on a trampoline is our silly joke. Again, it's not the most hilarious joke I've ever heard in my life, but it is an example of a Christmas cracker or pantomime joke using the rules of being silly. So another example of a silly joke, uh, if I think of a really boring everyday object, which I use every single day in my house, it might be a kettle. So remember that alien from Planet Zog has beamed down into my house and has said, what is that? And I'm going to have to describe the kettle. So I say, this kettle boils water. Okay, a kettle boils water, as simple as that, as boring and as unfunny as that. And now I'm gonna think of an activity. Well, the activity that I'd like to do is I'd like to go on a skateboard. Now, how would I describe going on a skateboard to this alien from Planet Zog? I would say that to go on a skateboard involves whizzing up and down the street on wheels, like I'm Dennis the Menace or Bart Simpson. And so now I've got my description of my kettle it boils water and my description of being on a skateboard which is me whizzing up and down the street on wheels i can put those two answers together to make the question so the question becomes what boils water and whizzes down the street on wheels the answer is of course a kettle on a skateboard or a kettle skateboarding Again, not the most hilarious thing you've ever heard in your life. I know, I admit that, all right? But it is the rules of being silly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave those rules on your screen now and see if you can come up with a silly joke based entirely on the rules of silliness. And I'll see if I can come up with some more as well. So remember, You've got to think of a really boring everyday thing in your house. And then you've got to describe it. And then you leave that to one side for a moment in your brain. And the next thing you do in your brain over on this side is you think of an activity, something that you like to do. It might be swimming, it might be riding a bicycle. It might be dancing, a particular type of dancing perhaps. And then you find a way of describing that activity to this alien from Planet Zog as straightforwardly and as simple as you can. Then you put it all together and that becomes your question. Your question is based on your description of your object and your description of the activity. You put them together, that becomes the question. And the answer is your object doing your activity. So we've got one from uh, Sylvie here. Uh, what has bristles and goes up and down? What has bristles and goes up and down? The answer is a toothbrush in a lift. Very good. That joke elevated me to a higher plane, Sylvie. That joke had its ups and downs, 
uh, but it was fantastic. Well done. That's a perfect example of using the rules of silliness to, to make a joke. Let's see if I can come up with one. Um, what boring object can I think of? Um, what did I have for breakfast? Toast. Okay, toast. A toaster. So what does a toaster do? Uh, a toaster cooks bread. A toaster cooks bread. So a toaster cooks bread. Then I'm going to think of an activity. Um, going to the cinema. I miss going to the cinema, but that's my activity. What happens when I go to the cinema? Well, I sit in the dark in quiet and I eat popcorn. I sit in the dark in quiet and I, I be quiet and I eat popcorn. That's what I had to do when I go to the cinema. So now I put that with my description of the toaster. So it would go something along the lines of what cooks bread, sits in the dark, makes no noise and eats popcorn. A toaster at the cinema. See if you can come up with any more examples uh, using those rules. What about uh, thinking again of a boring object? Uh, what about a fridge? Okay, a fridge. What does a fridge do? A fridge keeps things cold, doesn't it? A fridge keeps things cold. Uh, now let's leave that to one side. Let's think of an activity. Um, what about, what activity could we do? Uh, going to the swimming pool. Uh, going to the swimming pool, okay. Um, and what happens when you go to the swimming pool? Well, you do the backstroke. Uh, and so the answer to the question, the joke might be, what keeps things cold and is really good at the backstroke? Uh, a fridge learning to swim or a fridge practicing swimming, something along those lines. Again, again, you know, that's that's the rule. So you think of your boring object and then you think of an activity. You think of a way to describe that object and a way to describe that activity. You put them together and what have you got? You've got silliness. Let's see if either we can think of another one that comes through in the chat or I'll come up with one more before we before we move on. What about What about hmm, I'm still thinking. Let's see if you can think of one as well. Hmm, what boring things do I have in this house? Uh, what has four legs and is flung out of an aeroplane at great heights? a chair parachuting or something like that, something like that. Okay, so those are the rules of being silly. And so we have uh, learned the rules of being silly. We have learned the rules of punnery and making puns. We've learned the rules of homophones and also of homonyms and so what I can say to you all here this afternoon is a huge congratulations a huge pat on your back give yourself a big pat on your back both both shoulders big pat on your back and congratulate yourselves for being fully qualified joke builders and you can send your jokes in to the tram shed as I said and the best ones will get pride of place in the tram shed window so every time you walk past uh, the tram shed in Woolwich uh, your joke will be there for all to see. And how do we get your jokes, I hear you cry? Well, I'll tell you. You can send them to us at The Tram Shed via email, on social media, at The Tram Shed underscore for most social media, or by dropping off your creative masterpieces at Tram Shed's venue in Woolwich on Mondays between 12 and 4 p.m., not before and not either, please, and they will be displayed in their art gallery window display. But I want to do more junk building, I hear you cry. Well, if you know someone without digital access who wasn't able to take part in this YouTube video today or isn't able to do that kind of thing, well, they can download an activity sheet from the Tramshed website or get in touch with the amazing people, the amazing team at the Tramshed on the phone or via email and the Tramshed team can post an activity sheet straight to them. And I'll let you in on a little secret. 
I made the activity sheets. They're all about puns. They're all about being silly. They're very good indeed. They're huge amounts of fun and they're perfect to take to school as well. So get in touch with the amazing team at the Tramp Shed if you'd like to do that. Next week, uh, let me tell you all about that because this session has been part of the Tram Sheds All Together Now program and there will be free sessions on YouTube every Tuesday and Sunday at four o'clock throughout spring and you can find out more about all of those sessions at tramshed.org. You can see that the next session is coming up. There's an intro to spoken word uh, this coming Sunday uh, and on uh, this time next week on Tuesday, you are the champ. Create your own wrestling alter ego, which sounds really fun indeed. It just leaves me to say thank you so much for building jokes with me this afternoon. I really enjoyed most of those jokes and apologies for how groan worthy and groan inducing the majority of my contribution uh, was this afternoon. I've been Dan Delamar. You've been really funny. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time over on the Tram Sheds digital channels. Thank you.